Hey everyone, what's up? What's going on? Uh, I'm excited. We've got a great batch of episodes coming out for you these next few weeks. Uh, we have our Christopher Robin review next week. Uh, we have our review of 8th Grade the week after that with returning guest Alex Branchick. And of course, uh, this is our review of The Meg with special guest Sean Henry. But we'll get into that in just a moment. Real quick, I just wanted to plug our Facebook group, uh, because the conversation does not end when this episode does. How many fingers am I holding up the Facebook group is this just ongoing conversation about all things movies, including uh, movie news, movie trailers, and of course, movie memes. Uh, so check it out and join the conversation today. Um, and. Lastly, just uh, consider supporting the podcast. Uh, we've got merch at howmanyfingerspodcast.bigcartel.com. Uh, you can also find a link at howmanyfingerspodcast.com. Uh, our inventory includes t-shirts, koozies, and stickers. And we've also got a package deal that includes all three for just $11.99. Pretty cool, right? Uh, but not as cool as starting this episode, though, <laughs> which I'm going to be doing right now. We're going to be reviewing The Meg this week with returning guest Sean Henry. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Joe. And I'm Mike. And you're listening to How Many Fingers Am I Holding Up? The podcast. And this week we'll be reviewing The Meg. My God, it's a megalodon. No, it's... That's just way too long. We're going to go with the Meg. Hmm. Hey everyone, and welcome to How Many Fingers Am I Holding Up, featuring two guys getting in touch with their feelings and reviewing movies in a weekly podcast form. Kiki, do you love me? <laughs> uh, in our feelings. Uh, it was a suggestion from Tony Tromador on Facebook. Thank you so much for that synonym suggestion, Tony. Thank you, Mr. Tony, Mr. And Tony. And if uh, any of you out there listening have your own synonym suggestions for drunk, you can suggest those on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, email, or Gmail. But uh, let us delay no further. Betwixt us for the second time on this podcast, Who's that the incredible from? Sean Henry tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. Second time's the charm. Yes, Thanks you might remember back. Sean from our Get Out episode last season. That was beginning of last season. Yeah, quite it's a while. Been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been. Uh, but Sean is a very talented musician, a multi talented musician. <laughs> Uh, you're in yeah. Bright Eyed Deliverance because we're, of course, in the midst of Bright Eyed Deliverance weekend we special. Are. <laughs> we are. Uh, we've got Alex Branchick, bassist of Bright, Bright Eyed Deliverance, uh, in two weeks on our eighth grade episode. But, mm -hmm. Sean, you're the drummer of Bright Eyed Deliverance? I Yeah, I think that's what I would call it. Yeah. Yeah, I'd probably say that, you know, I pick up some sticks, hit some. Hit some, hit some skins. You pound skins. 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 <laughs> Whatever you want, man. Uh, and then I'm going to let you take it away for all the other projects you're involved in, because there's oh, a lot. <laughs> all right. So uh, my name's Sean Henry Tonight. We established that. And I actually have a band called Sean Henry Tonight and the Tonighters. Mm -hmm. You know that? You knew that? Cool. <laughs> Did you know that? I play bass in that, and I sing. It's a cover band. Uh, you know, I make some original music on my own. I'm also in playing drums in a band called Devil in the Belfry. Um, and as well as I play guitar in a band called Your Creepy Neighbor. Ooh. And that's right. It was called Your Creepy Neighbor. <laughs> that's a great band name. Thank you. Uh, you got links for any of that crap you can drop here? Oh, or? man. Well, if you go on Spotify, Bright Eyed's on there. Mm -hmm. um, you've probably heard enough of Bright Eyed Deliverance at this point, though, as I know you guys are already downloading the album as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> um, for other stuff like that, you can find me on Facebook. And you can find me on Instagram, Sean Henry Tonight. I, I'll usually try and keep a little bit up. I'm not great with social media right now, but uh, I'm going to have to dive right back in that soon so you guys keep up with all the crazy things that I'm doing. Oh, for sure. Uh, all right. Now we're going to drink some alcohol. Cool. Fellas, do you want to do some are. alcohol with me? 
I don't know. This is my, my first time. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a little nervous. Uh, we're going to drink some truly alcoholic seltzer that Sean brought for us. Contains alcohol. Warning. So, yeah, I was talking about, I've had the, what was the? White Claw? White Claw. There was another one that has a mermaid on the front. I just had the blueberry flavor of this, but this is uh, raspberry and lime. And uh, I was telling Sean when he, he brought this up that I feel like this like blew up like over like a weekend, like yeah. a couple weeks ago, because now I see it everywhere. Oh, I never really? saw it anywhere before that you go to a park a they, whole family's drinking it like it, the, the distribution must have like just made its way out here oh, for some reason truly specifically yeah okay i don't know where they're based out of i don't know if it says it on here oh there's literally um, the mermaid one i was talking about is literally just called spike seltzer oh yeah this is, that's this pretty this is spiked and sparkling hmm. i think they kind of one up them mine is the with hints of wild berry flavor i'm, I'm a little surprised that the five percent alcohol on this because it's just kind of like seltzer it is it, it tastes just like seltzer yeah it's got like a little bit more sweetness than like most flavored seltzers have i feel like yeah i like it i dig it truly i enjoy it <laughs> as do i <laughs> oh boy but this week we're reviewing the meg and i'm gonna read the imdb description and then joe's got some jonos about the make <laughs> we'll see <laughs> tune in after my reading of this imdb description <laughs> if that silence says anything no, i'm just kidding yeah uh after escaping an attack by what he claims was a 70 foot shark jonas taylor must confront his fears to save those trapped in a sunken submersible jonas you fucking liar <laughs> <laughs> um okay so this uh film the meg is directed by john Turtle Tub? <laughs> is only what yeah. I can assume. Yeah. Um, but he's directed Three Ninjas. Oh, yeah. Cool Runnings. Oh, yeah. Oh, While yeah. You Were Sleeping, Phenomenon, oh, yeah. <laughs> Instinct, The Kid, uh, National Treasure, National Treasure Book of Secrets, oh, God, yeah. uh, The Sorcerer's Apprentice, Last Vegas, and uh, yeah, quite a few uh, pilots and TV movies and so on and so forth. Um, a lot of pretty successful movies on there. Yeah. Like, it definitely. While You Were Sleeping is like low-key one of my favorite romantic comedies of all time. If I can just get that out there on, there on the podcast. <laughs> That's out there now on the internet. I can't take uh, it back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the screenplay is by uh, Dean Georgerus, uh, John Hober, and Eric Hober. And it's loosely based on the 1997 book Meg. A Novel of Deep Terror by Steve Alton. I was really surprised to find out that there was a book that this was based on. (laughs) Yeah, I think it's like a collection of books, too. I think there's like five of them. It seems like something that could only be like, oh, like (laughs) straight to sci-fi channel. (laughs) Right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, The film stars Jason Statham, uh, Lee Bingbing, Rain Wilson, (laughs) uh ruby rose uh, winston chow and cliff curtis um yeah i think uh disney originally purchased the rights to the book in the 1990s but after several years of development hell uh the rights landed at warner brothers and that's how we got here uh, i think the screen was first lit in like 2015 um Yeah, and I think most of the cast and the director joined in 2016, and they started filming in New Zealand and ended filming in in uh, China in uh, January 2017. Uh, And it's a Chinese American Mm -hmm. co-production, which yeah, I think there's there's a lot to be said about that because there's definitely. I mean that that's it for my notes, but we definitely have. I feel like the market, we're starting to market, I said this during, I think I mistakenly said that Skyscraper was a a Chinese American co-production. It was not, but I definitely think they had the marketing for the Chinese market in mind there, just Mm -hmm. because it was set in China. Hong Kong, Hong Kong, yeah. And um, uh, what was I going to say? I mean, there's, uh, what was that other movie that also had it? Um... What was the one, 
the large robots that people are in. Oh, Pacific, Pacific Rim? Rim? Yeah, the second Pacific Rim. That looked like that was also marketed kind of for um, the Chinese market or whatever, mm. too. Um, and they've been doing really well. I mean, in fact, I think, um, like, Triple X 3? Was that the one that came out last year? Yeah, I believe they're on three. <laughs> <laughs> but that had like a very multicultural cast. I think that might have I don't I don't want to say anything. That might have been a Chinese American co production. And it was one of the top grossing films worldwide last year. Mm-hmm. Which is crazy. Yeah. It was one of the most viewed, one of the most top grossing films. And again, not a lot of that was in America. Uh, but like all over the world, people were watching, you know, Triple X three kind of. <laughs> so I can understand why they're kind of making this movie. Um, again, I also think Asia loves the Fast and the Furious. Yeah. So they're kind of. I I think right now they're they're picking these leading men from Fast and Furious, so they appeal to like kind of the American market, and then you can also get the Chinese market in there. Um, we do have like some. Sorry, I'm just babbling on still, but it's kind of weird to see like the the Asian actors in here, uh, because they feel like right at home at in like a Chinese drama film. Mm-hmm. Uh, but here they feel a little out of place. There's a lot of stuff that feels out of place in this film, but oh, that's yeah. this is just one of them. Where like they're doing just you know fine in like if this were like a like an Asian like dramatic film or whatever. Um, but again, like them playing opposite of Jason Statham is just kind of like very, very jarring. Said they don't understand very the weird. dynamic of like a, a Jason Statham vehicle or a Dwayne yes, yeah, exactly. Rock Johnson vehicle right, yes. like, uh, where everyone is kind of just along for the ride. <laughs> right. Yeah. It feels like Jason Statham is like in his own world, mm-hmm. even when he's trying to interact with everybody else in the movie. Mm-hmm. I just had that feeling the entire time that. He was just so removed, and mm-hmm. he know he knows what he. I mean, he knows what he's doing. You know. I this, wish there was more Jason Statham I, in this movie. Me too. Uh-huh. I think honestly there wasn't enough. Yeah. Like I'll take like we just did. We did Rampage and we did Skyscraper. Oh boy. And after watching this movie, I was like, I'll take Jason Statham over The Rock any day. Yes. Oh yeah. He's I agree. got like this cheeky like, oh, whatever you fucking say. Like you know, just like <laughs> takes no shit. That's the Megalodon. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, we we can get into it early, but like, I mean, we've talked about in a a lot of our rock movies, sort of the uh, phenomenon of like the rock being cast as these and only picking movies where the rock can have sex and chooses (laughs) not to have sex. Uh And I feel like when you like put Jason Statham versus the rock, it's like, night and day because like in this movie yes. like jason statham is this like sort of like not fully hedonistic but definitely like out for his own pleasure <laughs> and like beginning of the movie and then like it's very clear in this movie that like jason statham fucks yeah. <laughs> oh yeah he's, like he's Found the world he's like balancing like this hot ex-wife that he saves and he's like told you the megalodon was a real baby <laughs> i was a crazy across the fucking world <laughs> and then like and then she's in like the er recovering and she's like so where do we go from here like ready to pick the marriage back up kind of and he's like Sorry, baby, there's another woman on board. And he's got her, like, rooting for the other yes, woman. Yeah. <laughs> oh. But, like, there's the one scene where, like, the, the uh, Su Yin character, like, mm-hmm. is underwater in trouble. And he just, like, has no hesitation of, like, I'm diving in there. And I'm just thinking, like, man, like, Jason Statham, like, really wants to fuck right yeah. now. <laughs> and, it, like, it, it's, like, we're laughing at it, but it, it actually works in, like, yes, making yeah. him uh-huh. a more relatable and just real character. Like, because I have such a hard time relating to The Rock when like these like beautiful women are hitting on him, and he's like, "That's okay, but I'm gonna go home and just be by myself." <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, The Rock is always like, "Wow, girls in bikinis, very beautiful." <laughs> like, you know, like, like that's his like delivery all the time. <laughs> That's uh, like that's like he's in Ballers on HBO, and it's trying to be this entourage where, like, I was just talking about this on Joe Mano's podcast. Where we we're talking about like Ballers is not entourage, kind mm-hmm. of. It's just kind of like you know, like entourage. As much as we regret it, like we love it, but we regret it. Where it's kind of they're all fucking skis balls, and they're like, "Hey, baby, come over <laughs> here." Kind of the rocks, kind of like, "Hey, baby, that's a very nice bikini." Okay, <laughs> you know, I gotta keep keep doing the 
whatever drives this plot. <laughs> <laughs> I've also heard that Rampage was supposed to have like a more sinister kind of ending. And The Rock was like, no, I walk if it's a bad ending. Like, I only want everybody to be happy at the end of my movies. <laughs> at the end of Rampage. Like, yes. Uh-huh. Rampage. The game where, where yes. you know, <laughs> you're like beating the shit out of all the buildings and, you know, eating people. You kind of oh, get... good ending? Oh, you cool. kind of, like, <laughs> I'm a little confused why, like, America loves The Rock where he's kind of like this Boy Scout, you yeah. know? Like, we want to see Jason stay. We want to fuck. Of, right? Yeah, we, <laughs> we want to fuck. We want to fuck. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> Yo, you know what only, like, gets better in time when I think back to it, but I'm never going to revisit this movie? Crank. <laughs> Where yeah. like Jason Statham just has to like fuck some woman in like the middle of China <laughs> yeah. in like a plaza and like just to keep his keep his heart rate up and I'm like, God damn it, Jason Statham. And the Wasn't fact that, that like Amy Smart? I think so. I think that's how yes. far back Crank is, is like Amy Smart was still making movies. He's gotta <laughs> crank one out into Amy <laughs> Smart. <laughs> um But yeah. Uh it's just I mean, he survived that. We obviously want him in our lives, in our American cinemas. <laughs> well, this like outperformed like projections. Like it was projected to make like twenty five, maybe like mm-hmm. million, and it made like forty five million at the box office and was number one the weekend that it premiered. Wow. Like some other podcasts I listened to, like I I wish I remembered like the long list of names that they had, but it was just like Ocean's Eight, yada yada yada, all these huge fucking movies that cost so much money. And then it's like, what are all these movies, like, that came out this summer, it's like, what do all these movies have in common? And it's like, they didn't open as big as The Meg. Like, The Meg (laughs) fucking dominated at the box office, which is crazy. And it's also a little disappointing when we get into this movie, Mm because to start it off, I think they market this movie to look like, oh, it's a fucking giant shark, and it's swimming under thousands of people, and then we really don't get any gore in this movie. Yeah. Zero gore. Um, apparently, Jason Statham. Just, ugh, Jason Statham spoke out about this, and he was like, "There's actually an all-rated cut that I much prefer that they didn't." <laughs> but it was just kind of like I read an interview with the director and where I fuck every woman on that <laughs> shit. <laughs> like we, yeah, exactly. I think Jason Statham signed up for this movie and was like, "Oh, this is gonna be Piranha 3D, where uh, I'm gonna fucking yeah. and fucking kill people the entire time, That's definitely and we're gonna see some like terrible gore where people get ripped apart by a fucking shark." And um, the director was like, "Yeah, you know, the studio was like, it's not gonna make any money if it's R, so mm-hmm. you know, we uh, cut it into a PG-13 movie." It was just kind of like, so yeah. oh, they did film it as an R. Yes, oh, yes. Okay. Apparently, they sunk a ton of money into like uh, CG gore, oh. and they cut it all. Yeah. So, would it have done as well if it was an R movie? No, no, no. I I said this off off mic. I said, uh, there, the fucking theater was full of kids going nuts for this movie yeah, too, and yeah. like i was in like uh the christopher robin movie and there were zero kids or there was like two <laughs> kids in there it was just kind of like nobody's seeing christopher robin Fuck that bear i was yeah. violent <laughs> yeah exactly um and i i don't know how they felt about it really because again the, you don't really get violence uh, yeah. in this movie it's uh very anticlimactic uh i mean actually you see violence but it's like 3d animal on 3d animal violence well, and it's like, just in concept, I'm, I'm almost kind of surprised that there is an R-rated cut because the concept is like this huge shark where its bite is bigger than the entire human body. So all the violence to me just seems like it would be like, swallowed this human Swallow whole. whole right? Whereas like the thing yeah. that like scares us about sharks is like, he could take my arm off or he could bite my body in half and I would just be half a person in the water. You know, like that's what's terrifying about sharks, not getting swallowed because then we would be scared of whales in the same way yeah. that we are scared of sharks, you know? I think I really wanted that beach scene where there's thousands of people floating in the water. I wanted that to be like a I love mess. That. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. And we didn't get that. Mm-hmm. No. We see like the shark almost eat people off screen. Like it's like it was a ridiculous amount of caution. Yeah. There's a lot of like it, the shark will come for someone and then it'll bite down and then like quickly we cut away. 
um, not necessarily that beach scene, but just all the scenes of the shark eating someone yeah. is like shark bites down, and then we cut away. <laughs> this film has a yeah. This film has a problem with I don't and I don't know whether it's that R to PG thirteen kind of uh, transition that went on before this movie was released. I they, there's like a weird hyperkinetic like editing that's going on where it's like they'll have like very cool shots and they'll like cut away from them, cut somewhere else, come somewhere else. Cut. Like it's just like. There are, like, things to be, like, marveled at that they spend about, like, a millisecond on. You know, like, yeah. it's just, it's weird how this movie is cut. I think the only time that style of editing worked for them was uh scene with the dog. Yes. Because yeah, yeah. that was kind of, you know, yeah, they, yeah. they played that to they strength did, yeah. for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, spoiler alert, the dog doesn't die. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Even though, once again, I wanted to see that dog get, like, spit back up. I don't know. I guess same with the gore, too. Like, what? you're right. What would, what would they do? Like, it would have to be some... It'd have to something regurgitate where... bones. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it seems flawed in concept. Um, right. But Well, I... it, what if it was, like... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what was... I don't know. I can I can like picture some crazy stuff in my head, but yeah, like it needed to, it wanted to be Deep Blue Sea, which is yes. a very big shark, the biggest shark, but it's not a megalodon. Like it's mm-hmm. still small enough that it you know it doesn't swallow Samuel Jackson whole. It like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, bites yeah. him mm-hmm. and like has to like chew him around for a bit to like get him inside its mouth. We want yeah, I don't know, but yeah, I think I, he even just bites his arm off in that scene, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wanted it to be. Uh, I don't know, like shark I, attack. Yeah, I see those I, movies. I was yeah, yeah, yeah. It or even just more like mainstream kind of uh, the like Sharknado or whatever. Like yeah. we wanted it to be like a mainstream Sharknado with a big budget and campier and yeah, yeah. This is missing camp. Is that's that's the problem. Um, and again, if you watch the trailer, like it it tries to sell it to you as camp. They're like it, it does. Look what's gonna happen. You know, it's it's, yeah. it's the main criticism I've heard, and it's not wrong. Um, mm-hmm. Is that the movie is kind of in between those two things? Because there's parts of it that are like genuinely kind of cool, I think, mm-hmm. and like it obviously works because like Deep Blue Sea is not really campy. Deep Blue Sea takes itself like too seriously as a movie. There's right. occasionally some like obviously like you know Samuel L. Jackson like screaming as a shark eats him is a little <laughs> campy, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but for the most part it takes itself pretty seriously just as a straightforward blockbuster. Right. And it, it works, and that's clearly what they're trying to emulate here, but they're not willing to go too far in one direction. They're stuck in between, like, you know, a campy concept, but they're taking themselves pretty seriously. Right. Let's compare, um, I mean, just action movies that we've seen this summer. Um, oh my gosh, some fly that flew, like, <laughs> right in between my eyes. Um, but it, just, just for a brief second, but there was, uh, I felt myself comparing this to skyscraper Mm -hmm. at times and rampage yeah yeah and and rampage but like skyscraper is kind of an easy comparison just because we just saw it 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 was rampage over the summer it was earlier in the the summer but it was just kind of like we even have a similar setup where you know uh at the beginning of skyscraper the rock is on some sort of a like a SWAT team and he's dealing with a domestic dispute where a man's about to kill his family or whatever and it doesn't kind of go south. A a troubled past. Yeah, yeah. the rock, you know, gets his leg blown off or whatever. Uh, With this, it's kind of a, it's kind of a choppier opening scene. I was not crazy about this opening scene. I walked in the middle of the opening scene. Okay. I mean, I got the gist. It's sloppy. The camera works like a little, like, crazy it's a little too zoomed in it cuts a little too hard um so with that i would lean towards skyscraper but i still think this is a better movie than skyscraper because oh hands it's, down oh yeah most most definitely <laughs> not even a debate the, well the, the thing is skyscraper is a cleaner movie it's just it knows what it's doing the entire time but it's so less the, entertaining though oh like, right that's no, the, yeah. the the like in the main comparison, like obviously you have Jason Statham versus The Rock, and Jason Statham wins that because mm-hmm. he fucks. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but like you know, sort of in the grand scheme of things, this movie fucks as well in terms of like it it, it knows how to be fun and mm-hmm. not take itself too seriously and not get like too caught up in like the concept of everything and just like just throw punchlines in there once mm-hmm. in a while. Like that's it's a popcorn movie. Like no one is coming to this being like you know 
people start looking at like the logic of movies when they're not entertained. So like yes. when you see a movie like this and it's not you know entertaining or funny, that's when you start to go like, well, that shark wouldn't really actually be able to do that and whatnot. Like, but if if there's a bunch of punchlines and humor and comedy in there, you're not fucking thinking about it. You know, like none of us were doing that with like snakes on a plane or any of that shit because it was fucking entertaining as shit. Like you know, and that's what this movie does. I think better than Skyscraper. It's not perfect, but there's a steady stream of humor in this movie. Even if it doesn't always land, it's attempted like all the time. Like it, it's got a pulse to it. You know, it's trying to be a blockbuster popcorn movie, you know, where oh, you're just right. trying to forget about what's going on outside of the movie and just have fun with a crazy concept of a movie. It's got all the right beats to it. Mm-hmm. it That's does. what I thought of when I saw it. I was like, I like we were saying, like, I just expected this crazy, even Piranha was a good reference before, like Piranha 3D. I expected something like that where it's just absolutely insane characters. Right. No mm. one's really relatable. It's just everyone's there to, <laughs> to get taken out. But this right. movie, they actually tried so hard to make you care about these characters. And then Jason Statham's <sighs> going to fall in love with the one character mm-hmm. because he fucks. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was very bizarre to me how how by the numbers they were trying to go of like almost like a ser- like this is a serious drama. Serious drama popcorn movie. The first half has that problem. Eye candy. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. I agree. The the first half tries to be like very serious. I th- I think is especially that opening. Yes. Uh huh. You didn't miss much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> man, I do Couldn't wish. See it. I do. Th- I, I, I do, do wish it- we spent more time with like Jason, like washed up Jason Statham in Thailand. Yes. yes. Uh huh. I was like, yes. yeah, I'm here for this. Uh, I wish there was. A, I don't know. I guess it didn't take much convincing when they brought him a fucking audio clip of his ex-wife being like, Jason Statham was right! You know? Like, <laughs> uh, and he's like, oh yeah, sit me off. I gotta see this bitch's face. <laughs> yeah. That's Australian Jason Statham. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah. Oh, oh, one of the notes I forgot to put is that this movie was actually originally supposed to be directed by Eli Roth. <laughs> who wanted to write, direct, and star in this movie? <laughs> I was like, ay, 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 ay. <laughs> oh, and he, he was like, no, budget is too low. It needs to be 150 million. <laughs> I was like, oh man, Eli. What has he done lately? Besides that, like, green something. Like green Inferno? Green Inferno. I think that was the last thing that he <laughs> like, did. Did that even come out in what? theaters? How, it, it, it How was that theaters. the last thing? <laughs> and that was like the. Uh, what's it called? The Cannibal Holocaust. It's it's very movie. it's his love letter to Cannibal Holocaust. There was a mm-hmm. bunch of cannibal movies in the seventies on after Cannibal Holocaust had enough shock value to show that it would sell. You right. know? And Eli mm-hmm. Roth doing this movie, I mean I think it, it might have sold. It, yeah. yeah, it you might know? have been better. I well speaking about making it R like we did before, if they right. did make it R, then they would have had to go hardcore. Oh yeah. Well, they would have had a, had to have a name attached to it, like from the creator of Hostel. You yeah. Know, comes right. Yeah, the yeah. Name, and it's super gory. And know? I don't know if we want Hostel for uh, because let's admit this is a summertime beach kind of Jaws yeah. kind of yeah. thriller. I don't know if we want like summertime like escape the heat in the air conditioning <laughs> with fucking. The creator of Hostel, you yeah. know, like it's like it's. Uh, you want to feel dirty. I you. think they know what they're they're yeah. doing with the marketing uh, or whatever, or turning down Eli Roth. I think they knew what they were doing. Um, geez, though, man, after Rampage, after um, Skyscraper, even after this movie, it really makes me appreciate the Fast and Furious movies. I just like, or even just like the Marvel movies and superhero movies. Like as I, much I, as I shit on them all the time, like I don't know, they know how to keep yeah, it yeah. fun <laughs> and entertaining. <laughs> but also, I think like the Fast and Furious movies. No, like I feel like Marvel and Star Wars and everybody could like take a note from like Fast and Furious almost with like their pacing of how they release the movies. You know, it's not every three months like a Marvel movie or two or three months, and then it's not like every year like a Star Wars movie. It's just kind of like. Every once in a while, they'll just kind of mm-hmm. put one out. It's an it's event. Just, yeah. Uh-huh. When it comes out. Right. Uh, and I never thought I'd find myself saying this, but the entire time I was watching this movie, I was like, wish, wish they were, they were driving cars into <laughs> the, the shark. shark. <laughs> yeah. Wish they were driving. Like, <laughs> literally, 
I would be the first in line to <laughs> yeah. go see things. They're all driving cars into a shark. Yeah. And be like, the most important thing here is family. Now let's go drive these cars into the shark. I'd be like, yes, baby. Most popular Oscar. <laughs> most popular movie Oscar, That's baby. what they could do for Fast and the Furious 20. It'll be Fast and the Furious 2 <laughs> Like H2O, like water. Oh, man. I I really hope the next Fast and Furious title embraces like that meme where like the only logical like next setting is in space, space or whatever. <laughs> Family matters even more in space. <laughs> <laughs> you know, even when we're not home on Earth, my home's right here with family. <laughs> Now let's go drive these oh, space man. cars into these aliens. <laughs> One of those movies, see, I've definitely seen the first two, but one of those movies turn into like, like craziness, crazy yeah. action movies. I actually was just at Universal Studios. They just opened a Fast and the Furious ride. And by oh, ride there. in quotations, no. it was literally you on a tram car. <laughs> and every just crazy sound fast shit or furious. happening. <laughs> like Vin Diesel like hanging from a helicopter <laughs> that conveniently swoops next to you so he can go, look out! And then jump <laughs> onto something and shoot something while it explodes. And you're just shaking in a car. Yeah, crazy. I love my family. <laughs> oh, the whole, the whole queue. The whole queue of it, they're like, you're family now. Your family, family coaster. <laughs> family. It's a family ride. <laughs> I guess it was. <laughs> you could definitely say that. <laughs> um, I don't like even not grading this on the scale of like against uh, like skyscraper and rampage. I think it kind of works on some levels. I don't know. I was just I was not bored at all watching yeah. this movie. Like. I was kind of surprised. I got bored at some parts. In the middle, I think it maybe drags a little bit. I'll sleep for ten minutes. Um, <laughs> but like, I was kind of surprised at like the ways that they were able to add like a tiny bit of like layer to what a movie that could have very easily just been like big shark eat people, right? You know, but like they have like Jonas's like sort of past in the beginning of the movie, which was like in terms of like effectiveness, like you know, a very minor investment time wise that kind of pays dividends, I oh, think, definitely. through the course of the movie. Because mm-hmm. it adds all these layers to like Heller doubts him, his wife doubted him. It like makes the world of this movie feel a little bit more real because there's a lot of past like we see a little bit of it, but there's also a lot that's like taking place off screen, you know, about people doubting him and, you know, his like relationship to a lot of the other people like on the crew of this movie. Um and I think it makes like it more interesting, like when they have to convince him to come back. And I mean, we're joking about it before, but like what really makes him come back is that his ex-wife is in trouble, and like there's a little bit of history there. I think that adds a whole layer to it. Um, and I do think he actually has some decent chemistry with the Su Yin character in this. Like, mm-hmm. even though it definitely is like a like sort of forced romance, like. I don't again because I believe that Jason Statham is a character that fucks. I'm kind of into the chemistry going on here, and I'm rooting for him to fuck Su Yin. Like, I, yeah, no, in my mind, he's not going to stay with her. He's just like in to like go hard and fast, like he does with every other aspect of his life. He's gonna dive into that water like he does in the one scene, and then he's gonna dive right back out. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah. Um. But I do think that there was maybe, like, in some that same light, there's a lot that they maybe didn't capitalize on. Like, in the beginning of the movie, I think there's definitely a lot of, like, layers to it. And then it kind of, like, just turns into everyone versus the shark. Even though we have this huge cast of people, and there's... It's just like they all get along really well with each other. Well, yeah, that's, that's the thing, is that it's just... This movie so desperately wants that kind of, like, crew mm-hmm. like in any other movie where there's like an alien or right, something one guy even has a nickname the wall right right the wall <laughs> but like the, i thought it was the wall I, <laughs> apparently it's the, the wall, wall. <laughs> <laughs> but you could have like at least given like one of them like like none of them have any sort of personality besides like Black guys like afraid of sharks, yeah. you know. Like I was just kind of like, was, he was rough. Okay, well, he's, he's, it, he's copying LL Cool J yes, from Deep no, Blue exactly. Sea. Yes, um, it was just kind of like, uh, like I don't, I don't totally understand Ruby Rose's appeal. Um, 
but I'm willing to give her a shot. Like, yeah, she worked well on, like, Orange is the New Black, where, like, yeah, like, she's the new, like, hot uh, thing in prison or whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, I, I get that. But, like, in this movie, and I don't think it's really her fault, is just the... She has zero personality. She, she has like tattoos. The only right, no, yeah. She kind of just has this Roll kind edgy. of like <laughs> the like most defining part is like in the very beginning when Jason Statham first gets there and she's like she's like I designed this whole ship or I designed this whole database or whatever. <clears throat> and Jason Statham's like cool, you know, like and, <laughs> and then the, that's it. It's I like consider fucking. And like, I, I, why I, is she on the boat when they're hunting the shark? <laughs> Right, no. Like we, oh, we got to bring the architect along. Right, or like, what? What is her job? Or like, I don't know what anybody's job is. Yeah. They're all kind of like staring at screens, and nobody's like, "Come on, man, pick up your slack." Like, we need you on the computers right yeah. now. You know, it's just, it's kind of like everybody's just. They're kind of all just there to like watch a TV screen. That's like, whoa, oh, oh that yeah. submarine's in trouble. Well, it's just like, like yeah. it's this huge crew, and like there, there are so many opportunities to put friction here. Because, like, I mean, that's, like what, you, when the that's doc- what you do yeah. in a movie where it's like, yeah, the, the shark is obviously the main enemy. That's mm-hmm. the big thing we're worrying about. But it's a stressful situation that makes all of us sort of at odds with each other. And that's what makes, you know, those middle scenes maybe feel a little bit more real, what they needed. Like, and there's so many opportunities for it. Like, his ex-wife is on the boat. Like, right. they're but they get along fine. <laughs> like, there's no, like, friction. Mm-hmm. There's a perfect opportunity for his ex-wife to be, like, jealous of this, like, new fling that he's pursuing, mm-hmm. you know? Because that's a natural thing, like, to, you know, watch someone that you were married to be pursuing someone else. It's not really a pleasant thing, I can assume. And they just magically make her be like, yeah, like, rooting for him and mm-hmm. trying to set them up together. Like, that's a missed opportunity there. She's there, just there like, could have been, like, he fucks. Okay, like, he's I mean, this, like, he's this sort of, <laughs> this, like, newcomer to this crew where, like, Su Yin has yeah. been working there the entire time, like, you would think there'd maybe be some friction with the crew when he's trying to get in with Su Yin, and, you know, mm-hmm. there could have been someone there who had feelings for Su Yin, or just them being protective of her, because, you know, they work for her, they work for her father, and mm-hmm. he's this guy who, all they know of him is, like, he's the ex-husband of someone they also work with, and presumably probably haven't heard the best stuff about, because... Like, the one character says, like, oh, that was a failed experiment. Like, their one-year marriage. Like, right. obviously yeah. it ended in flames of some kind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He went to Thailand, like, by himself to drink himself to death. <laughs> like, there's, there's so many opportunities to just, like, sometimes in a movie like this, it needs to not be pleasant outside of, like, the actual main thing that they're worried about. You know? Like, it shouldn't be sunshine and happiness all the time that the crew is together. Like, you know? Like, you can right. have humor through friction between these characters. It doesn't have to be everyone getting along all the time. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, I I really... They, they really do... They way too easily all bend uh, together against the shark without, like, any reservations. And why is like, nobody like, you, oh, we shouldn't kill this one species that we just discovered? <laughs> like, the one thing they, well, they they throw, yeah. they try to cover their tracks by being, like, oh, the one uh, scientist, the Zhang guy, has regrets because he's, like, right. what does he say in the one scene? Like, uh, you know, like, we won today, but science <laughs> lost or something. Didn't Rain Wilson's character... Didn't he say, like, for a second, he's like, I want to capitalize on this, like, and not kill it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Maybe. for a second. But before for they, a second. But he's from, like, a money perspective. Be- like, oh, you would think uh, these yeah. people from, like, the conservationist perspective, right. there should have been a fight there. Somewhere, someone should have been a hardcore conservationist on this crew and been like, this is a one-of-a-kind species and we're just going to go kill it? Like, yeah, right. Also, hey, why did nobody, like, call the government before that and be like, <laughs> hey, what do you want us to do with this huge thing right. that could kill everyone in the ocean? I definitely think it escalated when it, it escaped from below the sea floor or whatever that was. Right, you know? but then it's but just yeah. kind of like wandering around. Like they also like they find the ship that it destroys and they're finding like human hands and stuff. And even then they don't call the government and be like, hey, there's a bunch of bodies out here. Yeah. <laughs> and it a kills ship that three destroyed. ships worth of people. Yeah, yeah. Um Yeah, man, I forget what I was gonna say. Um but yeah. No, and backtracking a little bit when I when I was talking about the crew or whatever, like there's there's a scene where like, oh wait, no, yeah, okay, now I know what I was talking about. The the doctor, I kind of had like this like thing with where like they're all banning against the shark like so easily, like there's mm-hmm. really no like Jason Statham never really had like a 
he never really had to prove himself beyond like the very beginning where it was like oh cool you saved that, those people like uh-huh. cool i thought like maybe hero from heroes dying was going he died a hero uh he was <laughs> <laughs> he i thought that was going to cause some friction and it does for like a split second um and then like all of a sudden that's kind of like paved over with when um, yeah, and they, they kind of had an opportunity because it, right. again it's like heller is saying he oh, did the oh same thing he did last time yeah but immediately the wall is like no he's one of us <laughs> He's family. <laughs> but Heller, <laughs> even Heller is kind of like, he sees that, I, or he sees something, and he says like, hey, like, a guy with a lifelong vendetta against this guy, mm-hmm. and then he just like looks at Statham, like, after like one like kind of act of heroics or whatever, and he's like, hey man, you went from an asshole to like, a cool guy or so, I forget what he says he says well, something he apologizes. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I think the senior thing when he goes to visit his wife in like yes, the infirmary uh-huh. or whatever yes the, uh-huh. oh my god it's, it's, I, well, I fudged it, up that line but I'm trying to well no and that's it's Heller basically being like I'm sorry you were right like I owe you an apology like mm-hmm. I thought you were crazy but now I, that I've seen this 70 foot shark it was real. I actually kind of liked that scene. I thought that was oh, okay. again it's part of the he part says of this movie that's like, adding yeah. depth to these characters and you know, it's sort of resolving this vendetta. But my problem is that after that, there's no conflict between the characters for the rest of the movie. Yeah, He's I, just on I, board right. and there's nobody that even like is annoyed by somebody else in the crew. Like <laughs> somebody could have easily been annoyed with like anybody in this crew. Right. They're all sort of a little eccentric in their own ways. And he just, I don't know, just some, the way he's, he's basically is like, man, you went from a fuck up. To the fucking man. Like, you know, like, it was just like... Heller says that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was, he says something. He says something where he turns, like, an, an insult, and he, like, puts it backwards, and he's like, you're an asshole to the are we thinking of the same, ass man. Are we thinking of the same character? Yeah, the doctor. Heller. Like, the... The, the one that doubts him. He doesn't seem like someone that would say something like that. He, yeah, which is... It's a really weird line. I think um, we're thinking of different parts. But there's uh, there's also a scene where, again, like, we could have invested a little more in Crew's personality or something where, like, uh, the doctor sacrifices himself so Ruby Rose can live. And I was just kind of like, this isn't really earned. Like, I've never seen them talk before. They needed less crew but more personality. Yeah. Right? There's uh-huh. a lot of people and not enough time to get to know all of them, really, or what they do, like, just as like workers on they this place really much less who they are as like people yeah toshi was like the death that i felt the most for just because i thought it was actually really fun when it was the wall toshi and uh his ex-wife in like the oh, summer yeah. and i thought the chemistry was actually working pretty well between the three of them and because they established like that the wall is actually you know they've got like a secret handshake they do like the squid mm-hmm. thing like that means something when toshi dies we feel for the wall right as we also feel for you know toshi dying and mm-hmm. but then when like yeah when the doctor dies we're like okay like who is his friend <laughs> right yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> because i'll fuck about that guy <laughs> i also thought they took a while to get into like the shark actually eating people outside of just like crushing metal and stuff which like <laughs> i hated it in the trailer Shark loves crushing metal dude i hated it in I, I complained about this in jurassic world as well like it's just it's it's so hard to it doesn't seem real like animals like don't just be like oh i'm so bloodthirsty that i'm going to like do something that hurts me yeah by like crushing through steel or glass or metal glass, or whatever yeah. like it, it's it's trying to like tap into this almost like horror element of like this murderous shark that will do anything. But I think what actually ends up being more scary and effective is if the shark is presented in this realistic light of like it eats when it's hungry and you just happen to be the meal. And that's Mm -hmm. kind of scary to me, you know, but it's not scary to me to be like, Oh, even though you're in this like submarine, it's going to come and try and like chomp you whole and blow up this nuclear submarine to the like point of like killing itself. And they don't really establish that like bloodthirsty, aspect like scientifically it's just kind of you know the shark needs to be trying to kill us so it's always trying to kill us there's no matter how recently it's eaten or not there's also really interesting character development that they like really never pick back up on and like it is kind of like yeah we all love like jason statham and really he has this one flaw in the beginning and then he comes to this like uh research base and then is like nonstop heroics is Same always another. 
Uh, yeah, sure. Please. Uh, oh, you know what? I already have a beer. Um, he's always doing like the right thing in everything. Um, and one of the most interesting scenes is in the very beginning when he's going for like that first deep dive or whatever, and he's like fucking hardwiring the submarine to go as fast as possible, even if that even if it means the energy of this sub is cutting off his oxygen, and he uh, like starts to feel woozy and he starts to get like a like a nosebleed or whatever, and he purposely cuts out the camera so that they don't see that like. He's not feeling well. And it's like, I... Well, he cuts it off for heat reasons. He's he's uh, like, because we have no heat on the thing, he's like, I have to cut off anything that would freeze over with the temperature. So he cuts off the but, camera. Uh, well, he starts to get a nosebleed, and he's actively trying to hide that from the camera. After the camera goes off, he's like, like very quickly, like covering like his nose and everything. And he's good. like, he doesn't want them to be, he doesn't mm-hmm. want the doctor to be right. And I think, like, there's, like, this hard and fast, like, attitude that Jason Statham has. And, like, you know, perhaps that could potentially be, like, the death of him, kind of. And then, I don't know, it's it's just, like, this really interesting detail of, like, this kind of, like, heroic guy who has zero flaws besides he did everything right and saved an entire crew and told the truth and nobody believed him, kind of. Like, where it's kind of something where it's, like, whoa. He is an actual flaw. Like, he flies too close to the sun. I think this is something we could follow up on. And then they never touch on that again. Yeah. I mean, even just from a, like, just a, like, details of, like, the actual physical plot, I thought that was interesting. Again, like, so I think they add a lot of decent layers in the beginning of this movie. Like, that's just, like, interesting from, like, you know, they have to get that. They have the whole time aspect in the beginning of this movie that's really effective of, like, they've got, like, 18 hours of like oxygen or whatever left in like the submarine we have to go rescue them before that like you know runs out and then when that like time like when they rescue the people there's no real sort of like driving factor like there's no like like time is a really effective tool in a movie like this to be like here's this time limit we have to do it before then because it it, like it it drives us as viewers to be like oh i can imagine what 18 hours is like that's not a lot of time to mount like a rescue for whatever here are the rules yeah Yeah, like yeah again like that the rules of this universe that's very effective way of putting it like they don't stick to anything yeah like that they establish they'll establish many things to try and raise the stakes and in the end it's just about When's the shark gonna pop up again, so that we can all just scream and and that this is what it felt like. It, I also thought that the whole like uh, like Mana One base was this like unrealized set piece where like yeah. they you know they have all these establishing shots of like Mana One, Mana One, but then nothing actually happens with the shark at Mana One. Like I, I again, I thought it was I would have almost liked this movie more if it committed more to copying Deep Blue Sea. And yeah. turned into them like trapped in the middle they of the ocean. Down, right? Yeah, like yeah. just have a storm come through and like the technology's cut out and we can't like communicate with the outside world and we're being like hunted by this like shark, you know, at this man of one facility. And, you know, he can clearly bite through like that's just such a, a like like a gun left on the wall. You know, like for mm-hmm. the shark to shark to be like, Oh, I can bite through like this like glass on like the O level of Mana One. But then we're just gonna go out on the boat for the rest of the movie. Right. And well, I mean, going out on the boat could have been exciting but the shark doesn't really like have a lot to do out there if it can't really like kill people you yeah know? like there's like i think the beginning of this movie is really exciting i think mm-hmm. the middle really drags when they're out in the boat like even though i think there's like there's some interesting ideas there it's just not really it's just not really paying off i guess as fully love, as you want it to be like i do like I him like being piece. pulled with the yeah. tied to that I think that's interesting. I, I love that actually the next set piece with the, the with the shark cage. Yeah, with the shark cage, yeah. and then Jason Statham has to jump in after that, and it's just like I, I don't know. There's um, a fun scene. It's it's it's, but it's not it's nearly kind of as like effective this, as the it, shark on the beach later on. Oh right, right. Even if it doesn't live up to what we kind thought of, that yeah. scene was going to be like. Well, actually, no. I I don't know. I I think the shark on the beach was just so disappointing that I was just kind of like, do something, you know. Like I think it had a lot. Well, it wasn't. Of, it, it wasn't, the, it wasn't the gory thing that I wanted was, it to be. But I thought right. the shark on the beach, like it introduced some like characters that were like, in terms of comedy, more fleshed out 
just by being random strangers in those scenes mm-hmm. than a lot of the crew were. Like you have like cool the, shots. The, the kid with well the kid with like the popsicle and like right. the, the yeah. floaty. Like, <laughs> uh-huh. He's hilarious and like we we get him mm-hmm. in one scene. Like, right. We don't need anything else. Right. You know, and then like the guys like on like the raft or like the dock mm-hmm. calling to the girls, we get them from mm-hmm. that scene and we don't need anything else. Whereas Wedding like party. they didn't really establish enough about the other characters in the crew for them to really have like like what would you write the punchlines for? Like Ruby Rose is not going to deliver a punchline. Like, right. Heller is not going to deliver a punchline. Mm-hmm. Like Toshi was probably the only one that had like the charisma to do it, and they kill him off really early <laughs> really off. Really fast. <laughs> and like the the guy who plays the um, DJ character um, has the charisma, but the lines that are written for him are so oh, awful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. I I think maybe I like the action set piece. Of the, uh, like, plexiglass tank uh-huh. uh, that they put her in and then lower in. Because there's a lot of moving parts with it. Like, like the one where Jason Statham goes in, like, don't get me wrong. Jason Statham, like, with a spear gun and that's it going up against the Megalodon is just ridiculous, <laughs> kind of, you know? Like, it's, what, what ridiculous imagery? And, like, those are my two stars of the show is, like, Jason Statham and the Megalodon. But then you have, like, all these, like, moving parts of kind of she's in this tank, she's in this, like, little plexiglass thing, and then the shark bites and, like, and drags her away and, and it's pulling the boat and then these cranes are flying and hitting people into the water and it flips the boat and Jason Statham's in there and she's running out of air. There's a lot of moving parts that I think I was like kind of a little more on the edge of my seat and than anything. But no, I definitely agree that the when we get to the beach, that has a lot more personality. Mm-hmm. That's where the camp comes out. This was like a, a little more just the like... The serious part of it. And yeah, it's... It, but also the scene that I'm talking about with the tank and the boat flipping and everything, it, it was just, it was kind of all for none. The doctor only dies and everybody else falls in well, the even water. That, that's yeah. the first time that people start actually dying in this movie. Right. Like yeah. the, that's when, like, they have the scene of, like, uh, I think it's, like, Ruby Rose getting back onto the boat and mm-hmm. the shark, like, misses her. And yeah. I remember, like, actively being, like, fucking kill her like, yeah. what, like we, we don't need her for the rest of the movie yeah. like we came to this movie to see some people get demolished by a shark right. you don't cast why this, is she not dead you don't cast this many people without killing most and like the, i mean yeah. like they're mm-hmm. I, I couldn't tell if they were trying to mislead us in that scene because like she's like trying to get up on the ladder and she's clearly doing like the damsel in distress like ah, ah, like, like <laughs> screaming like really overacting that scene and i was like oh she's about to get like chomped in half and like really play up this death scene and then the shark misses her and she's still Alive. and i'm like what the fuck are we doing here yeah I don't know. um i also thought the the, the k- tank scene was a little uh unrealized in terms of they start setting it up in a weird way where not a weird way but they set it up in a way that doesn't pay off where she's like oh like the yeah the it's made of this plexiglass that's designed not to break it's designed to like deform and like mm-hmm. bend and stuff and I was like, oh, that's going to make for a really cool set piece where the shark's going to bite it and it's going to keep collapsing while she's inside of it. And she's like protected, but it's like, then it's claustrophobia. And mm-hmm. that's like another fear that a lot of people have. And then it doesn't do that at all because the shark is so fucking big yeah, so. that it just swallows it whole, which is yeah. like, just like another like representation of how I feel about the shark in the gore scenes because right. it's like the shark doesn't bite anyone in half. It just eats them. <laughs> Right. The teeth don't even touch the people no. that he's like swallowing. I mean, there's which is not how a shark eats. Anyway. I don't know. I mean, you have I don't to know admit, why it's attacking the people when there's like to, all the whales and stuff out there. Right. <laughs> but you have to admit, there's a horror element to the poster where he's like swimming under a thousand people, and you're just like, yeah. That's fucking scary. Yeah. Is to see, like... Because that would also be scary if that was a whale, too. You know, if you were just something that big underneath you, like, and you're not really sure of it being there, you know? Mm -hmm. And that motherfucker, like, opening its mouth and then kind of, like, people just kind of, like, swirling down into, like, his mouth or something. Like, made a really cool scene. Yeah, it would have been, like, World of Worlds, kind of, like, where they're, like, sucking them up, kind of, you know? Something like that. Like, I was really, like, ready for some... I don't know. And they don't really do any of that. Yeah, I mean, there's some scene I, I did like um, how they sort of like approached like there's all the different types of people on different vehicles in the water and like all the surfboard people leave mm-hmm. and then there's all the people in like the tubies and the floaties and they're mm-hmm. like, don't leave us. And there's just <laughs> yeah. that, like huge mass of them waiting for the shark to come demolish them. <laughs> 
I was so glad they had a guy in a Zorba ball or whatever. <laughs> that scene was cool. I yes. actually like the little like, oh, kind of yeah. selfie stick mm-hmm. perspective. Yeah. Almost is the best way I could describe that yeah. you got. But then when the shark, like but that. when the shark eats that person, it like again, like it could have been like a really gruesome death, yep. but it's just uh, shark biting a bouncy ball. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <sighs> Couple cool shots. That's. I mean, it's like so <laughs> funny. It's like, it's just. I all I'm, all I'm getting from it, from what we're talking about is it's, it's a lot of like little setups of potential, and then they just don't follow through with any. Uh huh. It's a lot of could have been. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, there's, like, again, like, uh, if the movie is, like, completely working on all cylinders, or maybe not, like, picking on a lot of, like, the, the nitpicky science aspect side of this stuff. And also, if it, it fully commits to being, like, the campy thing that it should have been, we're not picking on this stuff at all. But, like, they do try to take the science part of this seriously so then it makes us look at the parts that don't work and be like uh i don't know about that because like there's the whole like you know there's this whole world that exists under the thermocline Mm -hmm. which apparently is a real thing um but then they go out of their way to be like oh it's like this world that's like it's completely separated from the outside world well then why are the megalodons under there like why are sharks like just bigger versions of sharks under there. Like if it's completely separated from the outside Especially world. Like, a lot of the creatures they saw down there looked pretty similar to what, like there were angler fish and stuff. Yeah, it was just stuff just that we have. Normal, like, like either don't set set it up as like they were trying to set it up like oh like they evolved like completely separated from the rest of the outside world. Well, then right. show us some like real alien shit down there. Yeah. Or don't make it set it up like it's this whole you know like cave system of like you know biology down there that when, that's not really what it is. Um, and then just a lot of the ways that like the megalodon like acted like hey what is it eating down there if it's that big <laughs> like you would think yeah, it needs to eat the the whales and stuff from like above the thermocline um and then like just a lot of its behaviors didn't seem like obviously they shouldn't they wanted you know in a, like a movie like this but again like it, when, when you're not fully committing to the camp then we're going to look at this stuff um and like like sharks when they eat like rowan was my girlfriend after we saw this there's like her biggest complaint with the movie is that like especially with them like eating like the submarines and stuff like that like sharks in real life they like swim by stuff and they like brush up against it to tell if it's real and mm-hmm. then they come back and they attack it but like in this like it just bites everything mm-hmm. regardless of whether it's lifelike or not you right. know whether it's steel or nuclear submarine or whatever mm-hmm. and it's like that doesn't Makes sense with like any living creature that's out well, there. Like, uh, fucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Much like Jason Statham. He's the Jason Statham of sharks. I was about to say. That's the evolution. Yeah, just like I said, there's two stars of this show, baby. It's Jason Statham and it's the shark. And they both <laughs> fucked. <laughs> I well, didn't totally understand the twist of like oh, yeah. there's a big shark and then there's an even bigger shark kind yeah. of. I was just kind of like wait what like I just just because there was like oh it was like kind of like oh yeah that's a big enough opening for like one big shark to come through kind of and mm-hmm. it was just kind of like oh okay yeah i don't know and why is there a second was, yeah, why is there another me. shark yeah they were like oh yeah we left an opening right right yeah so then how is it really a satisfying ending when they kill the other shark when there's still an opening they don't... well no they, they said it, it was an opening like an opening in time like in terms of okay the, the whole thing that's separate, the thermocline mm-hmm. is, I guess, super cold or super hot, whatever it is. And the temperature underneath and the temperature above are both like the Megalodon can survive in. And when they came through with the vessel, it let, it like broke the thermocline and let whatever the temperature is that the shark can survive in. Mm-hmm. So it came through like, and then it dissolves because the thermocline settles again. And okay. it's it's like basically it was a portal that the shark could go through and the portal closed gotcha. after they were I didn't, gone. I didn't realize it closed. That's, they, they meant opening, yeah, like that okay. way. like, And then the opening closes. I obviously wasn't woke enough for this movie. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> it's really you, you literally slept during it, didn't you? Yeah, I slept for 10 minutes, to be honest. Do you know what yeah. part you fell asleep at? Um, it was definitely during the middle where it just felt like nothing was, where it was just like, oh, they fell off another thing, and now we're just waiting to see if the shark's actually <laughs> going to do something. There's a lot of big, like, talking, and then I kind of didn't need, like, the 
father daughter like oh, I'm gonna die like you know like, <laughs> I'm, gonna die. I'm gonna die like I'm so proud of you and it was just kind of like that's not why we're here <laughs> we're, we're I here also thought see. it was like very presumptuous of Jason Statham he really wants to fuck going down to comfort her like someone he's like barely met. like none of the crew is down there who's worked with her for years knows her father like they're not down there being oh. like oh I'm so sorry like no. she's just by herself and he goes down there like hey What's up? <laughs> You're probably really vulnerable right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry that Meg looked on. Hate your father. The Meg. <laughs> oh, that was a funny scene, I thought, when uh, I forget her name, but she was talking about like the Megalodon, and then she slips in real quick the Meg. <laughs> I was like, oh, very smooth. I was waiting for that. They do start to refer to that pretty quickly. Mm. Um, Megalodon, it's just too many syllables. Who's got time for that? Got, yeah. Nobody does. They're scientists. This is shorthand. I mean, I don't know. Speaking of nobody, time, this movie was pretty long. Nobody aboard this ship is like really throwing out shark facts either. No. They're just kind of like, there's they one are. where it's kind of like. They're all scientists, but they're all kind of like, man, you mean to tell me that this shark can eat people? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's like the one time, I don't know whether the doctor says it, but like somebody's like, hey, Jason Statham, if you like swim out there by yourself he's not gonna eat you and yeah, Jason what? Statham's like okay <laughs> give me that spear gun and like, then the oh, shark be this close to it <sighs> oh man yeah <laughs> it was a movie yeah like, I mean if, if there's anything you could say about it it was a movie, it was a movie. I'm just scanning over my notes to see if there's anything that we missed um, How does this movie end? It, Finn. Yeah, Finn. It, yeah. I actually really like <laughs> it's that. Finn. I want to erase that out of my mind. But, <laughs> but what else? That's another weird thing. It's just like there's just a weird tonal difference in this. I they just it's, it's like they started the movie off as one thing and then ended it as another. And they're like, now we're being funny, you know, right, back yes. to the wedding party, uh-huh. and the dog survives. Uh huh. You know, like it's. Oh, or the beginning was so serious. I. There were some fun moments, but it was a different there kind were. of fun. There were. It just, I feel, yeah. It was just general, like, good character writing in the beginning, and then it just turned into funny things happen on screen at the end. Both work, but not mm-hmm. the same thing. Um, yeah, I still like Finn. I, I think you have to do Finn. That was funny. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> oh, I have to talk about this. Uh, <laughs> Oh this was outside of the movie, but the funniest part of the movie. Um, but when the shark gets killed in the end, um, and then all like the like sharks from the ocean come and like attack it. Oh, yeah. There's one shot where like a shark like swims out of its mouth, like to symbolize it. Like they're yes. they're tearing it oh, apart. Yeah. Like they're yeah. inside and out of it. And there's this like two girls in my theater, and the one girl goes, "Oh, he had a baby." <laughs> It's like, wait, do you think the sharks sent babies out of their mouth? <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, this is one of my no. favorite things about seeing movies in public yeah. is, like, the things that other people in the, the theater think are happening are... and they say out loud because they're so confident that it's happening. Wow. <laughs> oh, he had a baby. <laughs> Oh, man. It's like when I sell blockers and like the the one mom pulls up and she has the license plate that says Jen's mom and the, like the big guy in front of me he's like ha 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 do mom <laughs> I was like no no not that kind of not joke quite. ha ha she do <laughs> oh I did like the the climax is pretty crazy and I end like swimming around the reef and Right, but, but you could tell, like, parts, again, violence against a 3D shark is fine, you uh, know? I don't think they want violence against humans, you know? Where they did have the one scene with Dwight that was actually, that was the only really gory Dwight. scene in this. Does, does, does he get bit down on, though? Or it's, he he, we see his hand, on? but there's a oh, lot of blood. Oh, yeah. just the hand. And he's on, like, the bloody, like, whale carcass and... But, like, when Jason Statham, I, I really like that when he, like, slices the entire bottom of, like, the megalodon oh, open. Yeah. That that was pretty cool. And then I was like, yes, like, it reached, like, peak campiness when, like, they basically, 
the shark jumps out of the water like fucking Sea World, and Jason Statham is fucking plummeting like the a, spear. A, yeah, yeah. A spear into his like eyeball. Like yeah. it's such a ridiculous scene, and like the movie could have used so much more yeah. of that. Yeah, a lot more. And it was just kind of like, oh, was I, this imagine, what the movie I, was I imagine. I honestly imagine, to look imagine like? that it probably did have more of that in the way that like because that's the action of this movie or yeah. should have been is the shark killing people. Mm-hmm. And the way that they did it in this cut is so tame because yeah. it would just be like shark chomp person gone, cut away. Like, right. But yeah. if, if there's an R rated version of this, then I would have to imagine that it probably is playing up the campiness. It's the only way I'd of, watch it again. Right. Yeah. yeah. And to hear that song, what was that song that was in like Chinese? It was like a, a big oh. song. Hey, twice. Mickey, you're so fun. <laughs> yes, that's what it was. That was pretty funny. That was that was that bizarre. Was <laughs> so weird. For some reason, it's like when we watch like Mission Impossible, and I thought like um, Jason's or Jason Statham, <laughs> Jason, Tom, Tom, Jason Tom, Cruise. <laughs> yeah, I thought uh, Tom Cruise and Henry Cavill were like fighting each other, kind of. This is going to sound super racist, but, like, I thought that beach was full of white people, you know? <laughs> like, just because, like, that's how I'm conditioned with, like, American cinema, but it was just kind of like... I, oh, I, had, I had no idea what beach they were talking about when they right. named it. And mm-hmm. this. I was just like... Oh, I just assumed it was Miami or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, exactly. I was like, oh, the shark's going to kill a bunch of white people. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sorry to bring racist. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. I, know. I didn't know sharks could feel that way. <laughs> Well, they bite steel and metal. I don't yeah. think they care. I'll take it. I'll eat Chinese too. Yeah. But um, yeah. All right. Well, you ready to get in some ratings for this movie? I think yeah. we've sussed it all out. Uh, on the review aggregation website Rotten Tomatoes, the Meg has an approval rating of forty-eight percent, based on one hundred and ninety reviews, with an average rating of five point five out of ten. The site's critical consensus reads, The Meg sets audiences up for a good old-fashioned B-movie creature feature, but lacks the genre thrills or the cheesy bite (laughs) to make it worth diving in. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Uh, Rotten Tomatoes. I love you. (laughs) I just love the way they write all those. Cheesy Um, tomatoes. Let me pull up the Facebook group comments and you guys can decide who's going first. I'll, uh, this is your kingdom. <laughs> this is your waters. That it is. Um, so I gave Skyscraper one and a half fingers. And I gave Rampage, I think, two fingers. I would definitely put this movie above both of those. I think I'm going to land on a two and a half. Uh, just right in the middle. Because I do like this movie, but I do feel like half of this movie is... Not a good movie, and then half of it is. Uh, yeah, right down the middle. Um, yeah, I feel like I've left everything out on the table. God, I would love some more Jason Statham movies, though. <laughs> I really, I was Keep like, coming. I was like, yeah, literally during this movie, I was just like, all I could think of, I was like, there's almost like, as opposed to like a rock movie, where like the rock movie with with rampage i was kind of like oh we had like this nice cast at the beginning kind of and they all had like this comedy that played off the rock yada Mm -hmm. yada yada and then it just ends up being the rock talking with a monkey and i'm like god could there be a more terrible setting (laughs) and then like again skyscraper it's just like a lot of the rock by himself and his boring ass family um (laughs) but with this it was just kind of like i could just watch fucking jason statham you know drunk shanty like on a shanty beach town kind of you know like like for like for like half of this movie and see him like have some sort of redemption arc like fighting the shark or whatever i I think it should have just been more jason statham heavy but instead again they try to build a crew and hire and do some like really interesting casting and they don't utilize a lot of it there's so many random reaction shots of ruby rose where i feel like she doesn't even know she's a reaction shot she's just like (laughs) Looking at more screens. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And it was just kind of like, I don't completely understand why we cut to her during this part. It was just like, I don't know. It was, uh, yeah, uh, underutilized cast um, and not enough Jason Statham. Two and a half fingers. What are the Facebook comments? What do the people have to say? Uh, CJ Thomas responded with his favorite gif of a 
burning dumpster, a dumpster fire, if you will. Yes. He loves that gif. I don't know if he actually saw this movie or he's just posting <laughs> that on every movie that we have available. Uh, my wonderful girlfriend, Rowan Court, said yet another unrealistic expectation for sharks. <laughs> <laughs> and Nick Ocello said, did he fuck the shark? Ooh. Rowan responded, yes. Because <laughs> he, <did>. he fucks. <laughs> Listen, Jason say no fucks. Of course he fucked the shark. Um, I think I'm also going to give it two and a half fingers. I'm close to a three, but I can't quite do it. I would give it a 2.75 if we were allowed to, to go into those uh, intervals. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree with the criticisms that everyone has pretty much levied that the, the movie it's it's not good enough or bad enough to really be entirely fun like it's it's we're not totally laughing at it but we're not completely laughing with it or you know enjoying with it um but i think that the difference is that like it it feels like a movie that people actually tried like i don't think anyone was just showing up to work on this movie as far as i can tell especially compared to like the Dwayne the rock johnson vehicles that we've been seeing this year where those just clearly seem like it's we know it's not going to be a good movie we're just you know I'll, I'll i'll put a bunch of keys together for the score and we'll do whatever and you know we'll just film this stupid shit and this like it, it seemed like even if they made some bad decisions in the movie they were trying things and they had an idea for what you know they maybe wanted the movie to be and it wasn't just people showing up to work um so i have to respect it a little bit for that and i do think some of it worked i laughed a lot i wasn't really bored at all with this movie like I think it, it maybe dragged a little bit in the middle, but like this is like a perfect like you know like rainy day like you know on AMC movie or you know uh, one of those other channels that yeah like, catch it on TNT too yeah TNT now. is yeah, what I'm good. thinking yeah. of part of um, Shark Week and like I, yeah. I I rolled my eyes a few times in this movie um, and I think it definitely could have benefited from like going deeper into the campy aspect <laughs> I mean, they went pretty going deep. deeper. <laughs> Like they're already going to the <laughs> depths. Yeah, I thought they, they broke went. records. <laughs> yes. um, or taking itself more seriously and then tightening up the logic um, and not going into the campy side. It could have worked either way. The campy is probably the safer bet. Um, it's 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 obviously not a good or great movie, but I really can't call it a bad movie either. Oh, no. yeah. um, and I just think when you like compare Jason Statham like to The Rock, like. It's just, it's night and day. Like, as much as I think The Rock is, like, this charming person that I like outside of the movies that he makes, Mm -hmm. and, like, I really have no feeling about Jason Statham outside of the movies he makes, in terms of what I want to watch on screen, like, The Rock, like, he doesn't have, like, with Jason Statham, like, even if he doesn't really have the star power of The Rock, like, he's got this almost, like, natural comedy built into just the character that he is because he's this like mean looking like mm-hmm. angry all the time fucking Brit so like anyone who talks to him there's that natural just like mm-hmm. back and forth like you're talking about in the beginning of Rampage where Rock is playing this like you know macho man interacting with these kind of like sissy men in the beginning mm-hmm. you know people who are trying to like posture as more brave than they are and the Rock is the person who is actually brave but what it ends up turning into with a lot of the Rock movies is the Rock just being this like likable sort of same person that he is on like Ellen and like mm-hmm. shit like that. But in like an action movie because he's not willing to be the Jason Statham guy. Like we're joking about it, but it's a serious complaint that the Rock doesn't fuck in his movies. Like right, the it, Rock is a Boy Scout and yeah. Jason Statham is like like if you want to be movie. that big like gruff like action hero, then you have to actually act as that big gruff action hero, and that's right. what the Jason Statham character that he does in all his movies can do because he can be this mean mm-hmm. drunk asshole that like you don't want to piss off and he's the one who's going to go do the brave thing and like mm-hmm. like Dwight's character in this kind of captures it really well where he's like man he's really heroic but he's got an attitude problem yeah. mm-hmm. but like you can't say that about any of the rock movies and like mm-hmm. it just makes it like again this could have been a horrible movie but because like if the rock was in it this is a horrible mm-hmm. movie but because Jason Statham is in it there's a comedy built into him just playing this sort of stock Jason Statham character. It's literally, if you look at like the last um, like Fast and Furious movie and we reviewed it, it begins with like a scene of like The Rock and he's like uh, the little league kind of coach of his daughter's like soccer team and they're doing like the, yeah, the yeah. comedy is that they're doing that kind of what is that Hawaiian uh, like dance where they're like ha, ha, 
It's like the Haka or the Hala yeah, or something like and, that. And they're doing I'm sorry, that. I totally butchered that. It's uh, <laughs> they're, they're, something similar. To right. Sea World, like dinner. Thing. They're, they're doing that, and he's and it's and it's the Rock, but he's doing that with a bunch of little girls, and it's supposed to be like, haha, it's funny, but that's like cute, and like, and then they have like a weird thing where it's like the soccer moms are into the Rock, but the Rock doesn't fuck, so like it doesn't even really make yeah, it's it's just wasted lust. Um, <laughs> but then, but then at the end, we have this climactic scene where it's like my favorite scene in the movie where Jason Statham has to rescue this baby from a fucking plane because uh-huh. that's what Fast and Furious is now. <laughs> and he puts it in like kind of like the hangover kind of like sling in his front or whatever. And he puts headphones on it. And so then we kickstart like this kind of like musical montage. And he's like running around like kind of covering the baby and like fucking blowing guys' brains out or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he's like, how you doing down there, love? Kind of. And it's like <laughs> really funny. And it's like very cheeky. And it's got like a really hard like like edge to it kind of uh-huh. where it's like oh and, like where like he like fucking murders somebody and then he's like oh sorry didn't mean for you to see that kind of like <laughs> where a baby sees somebody's like brain splatter on the side of a jet kind of like it's like really it's like that's the difference between two of them like yeah. but obviously their agents talk to them about like what each of their personalities are for the screen and what they each want them to do yeah and it's kind of like it's like well we really want like the rock accessible to like you know, like he's a family Eight year old. <laughs> boy scout kind of dad, and you know, like women want to fuck him, but he's not going to fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> he will not fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to kill him first <laughs> for him to have sex with a consenting, attractive woman. <laughs> you have to fucking murder him. She would have to have sex with his dead buddy if you wanted to have sex with The Rock. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jason Statham's like, <laughs> Yeah, sure, I'll fuck. <laughs> Whatever, love. <laughs> Put a fucking bag over her head. Doesn't make a difference. <laughs> and then he like winks at the camera and American audiences fucking go oh, nuts. Man. Like, fuck it, I'll fuck the Meg. <laughs> She's got a girl's name. <laughs> Short for Megan, right, love? <laughs> There's a toothy BJ. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh boy. On that note. Didn't Sean, think we'd go there. <laughs> Sean, what did you think of them? <laughs> God, I have to follow that up. All right. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I'm. I was thinking two and a half fingers as well. Um, just to match it up. Really, my problem is that it just didn't stick to what. Didn't stick to one thing. I didn't like the back and forth. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. wanted Shark Attack, if you guys have seen those movies. Yeah. Shark Attack 3, Megalodon, everyone knows that famous scene <laughs> where the guy's trying to get away with the money or whatever, and he gets, like, swallowed by the shark and terrible, terrible old CGI or whatever the hell on a wave runner. Mm-hmm. Like, I was kind of, you know, I just really wanted, or, like, Piranha 3D. I mean, I thought that was a good example of what I thought this could be really fun for. Just, just pick it, man. You want to rip off Deep Blue Sea, or do you want to go full crazy? Yeah. And that's why I have to give it two and a half. But at the same time, I didn't feel like I wasted my money. I felt like there was actually some pretty decent direction to it. The acting was fine. I mean, and notable people in it, too. In fact, I, I actually would like to see Rain Wilson do some more serious roles. You know, Have you seen, have you seen Hesher? I haven't, so there you go. He's fantastic in Hasher. Yeah. Also watch Super. Super's good too. I've seen a little bit of Super. All I right. do need to finish that. I just think I he might be you know, he might be good at doing something like that, but instead You would actually really I can't actually make a better recommendation to you than Hesher. Oh, Hesher's Hesher. fucking Hesher yeah. is a Sean Henry movie. It's, it's, All right. <laughs> it's like a five finger movie on my Ooh. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm gonna And to to anyone listening who hasn't seen Hesher, check that fucking movie out. I'm going to have to check that out then. Anyway, continue. Sorry. And I mean, really, you guys covered all my points. I was going to say, I just I just don't like how it just felt kind of half-baked, but it also wasn't so bad at trying to be bad that it was unwatchable. Like, I, the Sharknado movies, they're too knowing for me. You know, I want right, something yeah. like lower budget than that. Or even like the Jaws sequels, those are just so ridiculous that they're funny, you know, and they're enjoyable. Because mm-hmm. they kind of tried a little bit, <laughs> right, but yeah. they got people that Trying were not Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, 
if there's an R-rated cut, I'd really like to see it because I think that would help with the pacing mm-hmm. of of the shots. Maybe look quite a bit. The DVD or something. If they, I don't know. DVD, VHS, laser disc, sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, I'd have to give it two and a half stars because it wasn't. It's not the worst shark movie I've ever seen. Right. Fingers, it, not stars, like, Sean. Oh, my God. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> How could I? Oh, yeah, you're right. Fingers. The rest got bitten off by the Meg. <laughs> so I am I, I have the feeling they're going to make a sequel to this somehow. It did so well. It did so, okay, it, it did so well. well. The, the next one's going to be like a big squid or something. Yeah, 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 like I don't know where they could go from there, but I guess a squid. And you better believe Jason Statham's going to fuck that Oh, squid. he better be back. More Jason Statham. <laughs> Hollywood. Squid is going to ink everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so all that is obviously going to come out to just two and a half fingers right down the middle. Right. Splitting the baby like this movie wasn't willing to do with its death scenes. <laughs> yeah, it's like... Or the dog. Or the dog. <laughs> I was looking forward to that one. It's like weird <laughs> how you can like monetize life. <laughs> hey, Jamie, you guys ever see that video of the guy that moose? <laughs> Hey, Jamie, pull up video. <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> oh, man. Also, this is a... a oh, just to go back to the movie for one brief second, just because I need clarification. You don't want to talk about Joe Rogan anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you guys... What was going on in the one scene? I can't remember what character asks it, but they ask it of Ruby Rose, where they're just kind of like, what happened to your hair? What did know. happen to her? And hair. I don't know what happened to her hair. It's just I, her hair looks the same as it looks in the rest of the yeah. movie. But someone like directly, like they wasted like two or three back and forth lines on someone asking Ruby Rose what happened to your hair. And I don't know if something happened on set and they tried to cover their asses. I had no idea what the fuck was going I don't on. Even remember. That scene. I, I don't think even maybe remember. either there's a scene missing or they're just like. Well, she's punk, so we have to say like, "Ooh, you change your hair." I don't know if it was some weird. But it's thing like in like the that. middle of the movie, and it's you're like right. with, it's with someone that like I think has been in the rest of the movie. No, Why are you not the traditional right. beautiful woman who has long blonde hair? What happened to your hair? Are not all women born like Jason Statham's ex-wife? <laughs> yeah. wow. Anyway, I just needed. I was hoping someone had some clarification. I don't even remember. I was so yeah. confused. Anyway, if you agree or disagree with that scene or our thoughts on the movie in general you can leave a comment below on soundcloud or youtube hit us up on twitter or more effectively join the discussion already in progress on how many fingers am i holding up the facebook group just search that on facebook we've got a post going already for this movie all the other movies reviewed this batch and all the movies we'll review in the future uh check out our review of christopher robin christopher roberts next week Christopher roberts and our review of eighth grade with alex branchick the week after that both of them already done. Both of them already good. Right? I hope. <laughs> you agree? <laughs> I hope we save them. How many fingers would you give them? You'll have to find out, Sean. <laughs> uh, anything else you can find at howmanyfingerspodcast.com. Uh, we got some last plugs for Bright Eyed and all that other shit you're oh in, Sean. Oh, my God. All right. One more time. Or you could just you could just go back. You know, you can just start the video over. Yeah, give us this. two plays. All right, all right. I'll give you one more. <laughs> People start podcast at the end usually, so you're going to have to... Oh, okay. No, I'm just kidding. They don't, they don't <laughs> oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. It's like a radio show. Yeah. <laughs> all right, one more time. Sean Henry Tonight and Tonighters. Mm-hmm. It's my cover band. Sean Henry Tonight. Look me up on Instagram. That's me. Ooh. I have two EPs in the works. I didn't say that before. There you go. If you stayed this far, you got a little bit of bonus information. <laughs> bonus nice. info. Uh, Bright Eye Deliverance. You know, we're beating that into the ground. Jesus Christ. That's your, like, uh, <laughs> reggae, funk. Uh, funk? <laughs> funk, reggae rock. Funk, sorry. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, reggae rock. Reggae there rock. There we go. Um, that's a, definitely a fun project. And then I'm in two punk bands. One's Devil in the Belfry. It's like a horror punk band. Um, the other one is Your Creepy Neighbor. It's not a horror punk band. <laughs> but they're both punk. So if you if any of that interests you, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Bright Eyes on Spotify. More to come. There you go. All right. Nice. Glad we got that in. We'll uh, see you guys next week. Goodbye. Later.